Hey everyone, we're here with David Underwood of Shopify, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, REST hooks, APIs, webhooks, all the fun stuff that lets developers do awesome things with other people's platforms. Uh, hey David. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, how about you tell everyone quickly what you do at Shopify and what does Shopify do? Sure. So Shopify, we're a hosted e-commerce platform. We currently have about 60,000 merchants uh, running through us, and basically we provide everything you need to sell things online. We provide a storefront, we provide a shopping cart, we provide order management on the back end, uh, inventory management, uh, all these kind of nice things. So they, the strap line basically is if you can uh, imagine WordPress for e-commerce, that's kind of where Shopify lands. We're supposed to be able to be used by basically anyone, no technical knowledge required. Um, that's yeah, my, my job in particular, I uh, do a lot of work with the Shopify API, so making sure that it's nice and easy to consume for developers, um, helping developers out with questions they have, that kind of thing, um, and really just making sure that we're offering the best uh, API that we can do. That's excellent. So have you guys had an API around since the very launch of Shopify, or did the API come later in time? So the API, uh, the company's been around since uh, 2006, and I believe that's right. Uh, the API wasn't there initially, but uh, it was definitely one of the big considerations uh, whilst the code was being written. Um, I forget the exact date the API was released before I joined the company, but it's always been sort of either a big upcoming component of Shopify or like a big part of Shopify itself. Um, we're a uh, Ruby on Rails shop, so that sort of ties in really nicely to the fact that we are able to offer uh, an API that's sort of both easy to consume and easy to write as well, sort of the code uh, falls into place really nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's definitely a big part of our offering. We have uh, a large number of apps in the Shopify app store that allow merchants that, that maybe aren't uh, able to use 100% of their use cases through the default Shopify functionality. They can jump on the app store and they can add those specific things that maybe um, don't aren't required for everybody, but, but for that specific merchant, it's like uh, life or death for them to have that yeah. functionality. Yeah, very important for them. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, so the API came shortly after the launch of Shopify. What about webhooks? Were those part of V1 of the API, or was that no. another thing that came later? Yeah, so we added those later, and they're definitely uh, something that came out of necessity. I think, like, um, commerce in general, e-commerce specifically, it's very uh, real-time driven. I mean, you're, you're dealing with people's, ultimately, people's money is changing hands. They, they want to be able to get responses to or updates for things immediately. So our uh, uh, API developers who are, or consumers, or rather, who are getting this information want it as fast as possible. So previously, we were like, OK, you can poll for that data. So when a new order comes in, you can poll for that. But then all of a sudden, OK, we have 15,000, we have 20,000, we have 25,000 stores that's starting to become untenable, right? You can't have yeah. someone calling your API every minute times 25,000, whatever. Um, so webhooks are a really nice way to turn that around and say, you know what, we're going to tell you when something happens on Shopify. And that's going to be, A, it's less load for us, uh, but B, it's also about as real time as you can get. We're not waiting for the next request in that polling loop to come around. We're going to say, you know, it's happened right now. We're going to send it out to you right now. Um, so for mission critical apps, like, for example, digital downloads, uh, if you want additional download to be available as soon as the order is processed, bam, you've got it right there. And then as soon as the, the, the customer's gone through the checkout, you can be sending an email out to them saying, here's your digital download, it's available now. And they're not sat around waiting for, you know, minutes or hours potentially yeah. for, that, for that polling to come through and their download to be available. Uh, yeah. That's a real headache for merchants. So we want them to be as responsive as possible. So that's where webhooks fit in um, in terms of, like, where Shopify sits. We're, yeah. we're really keen on this real-time stuff. Yeah, that's a great that's a great use case too. Um, so you guys you guys did heavily feel since your webhooks came lever you you did feel the load of polling pretty significantly. Uh, when you switched over to uh, offering webhooks, um, did you have a sense of how much the load reduced? Is that is that numbers that you have uh, handy? That's or? not something that I have in my head, but it's sort mm -hmm. of. It definitely makes it a lot easier to manage. Like you can look at the subscription numbers on on our site, and like mm -hmm. just I remember looking at some graph, and it's like, okay, here's some guy who's polling. He's not he's not using webhooks, and they're available. And then you turn around and go, okay, guy, you can maybe you can do it like this instead. And they go, oh, that's cool. And then they do it, and then boop, the load just drops off, and it's nothing <laughs> it's basically. Just like a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, because it 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 turns it into more sort of it's 
the load is based on the shops he has installed rather than sort of constantly trying to pull you. So if he's only installed in a couple of small shops, he only sends web hooks maybe once or twice a day. Um, yeah. And it scales very nicely with the uh, with the size of the, of the number of shops that are that are being used by him. Absolutely. Um, so one other interesting component of how you guys offer webhooks is that you allow uh, a developer to subscribe and unsubscribe to them via REST API endpoints. Um, that's not a super common pattern, but it's one we're huge fans of because uh, end users of the application then don't have to be in charge of setting up and tearing down webhooks. It's a pretty painful process. Mm -hmm. um, what was the thought process on your guys' side behind offering that? Because it is a bit more to set up than just uh, just offering a webhook that a user can go pay somewhere. Totally. I mean, it's looking at some of the apps that we're servicing, this webhook functionality, it's mission critical to them. So if, and if you don't have any webhooks set up, that app doesn't do anything anymore. So we were seeing people, they would have the installation instructions for their app, and it's like, OK, and then go to your admin and paste this URL into a field in there. And inevitably, people do it wrong. They put it in the wrong place. They subscribe to the wrong webhook, and then their app doesn't work. Uh, and again, when you're dealing with money changing hands, that kind of stuff is really, really important. You can't have people's orders going missing in the ether because they're talking to the wrong webhook. So we figured, hey, OK, you know what? We're going to make the app developer responsible for that in these cases. We're going to say to them, OK, you want to receive webhooks? It's a REST resource. You just sign up for the topics that you think are relevant. And that's the other thing. Shopify has. Uh, I can think of like at least a dozen different webhooks that we make available. Be it mm -hmm. like creation of orders, the update of orders, like transaction changes, product updates, um, product deletions, you know, product creation, all these different kinds of things that can happen in the store uh, are available as separate webhooks. So you get a very granular availability there that you can uh, you can toggle on and off. So giving all those options. I mean, those webhooks are available to the merchant if they want to go in and they're maybe they're technical and they actually have a little thing they want to they want to add. But if you're an app developer writing a complex app, you maybe use three, four, five, half a dozen of these different webhook endpoints. And exposing or acquiring the merchant to go and edit all that is all of a sudden it's confusing and it's a barrier to entry and they tend to get very scared of them as soon as you start mentioning it. <laughs> to do with like, oh, it's it's webhooks, it's HTTP, it's uh, all these kinds of things. Yeah, so, fraught with failure. <laughs> exactly, totally. So. Um, Adding the yeah. sort of subscription sort of a natural extension as well, just because of the way that our API is written, it makes a lot of sense to have these resources available as subscriptions that can be subscribed to. Subscribe to. Definitely. Uh, and the other thing is, the nice thing about that is, if you create a subscription with an app rather than the merchant entering manually, when you uninstall that app later, potentially, that webhook, because it's associated with the API key that was created, it, that created it, you can remove those automatically. You don't yep. have to ask the merchant to go back in and pick them out, um, and you're not accidentally leaking data to uh, people that you're, you know, you're no longer doing business with this app. You don't want to be constantly sending them your order information whenever an order goes through. So, doing the subscriptions automatically allows the removal as well as the creation, uh, and that's sort of like a, a nice side benefit that we found from doing it that way. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, any other, uh, you know, success stories you've seen or challenges even? Uh, you know, implementing your API and the webhooks along with it? Yeah, big challenge. Um, again, with the kind of data we're using, uh, it's, it's a lot of personal information. We don't want to be sending these things insecurely. We don't want to be totally spoofed, that kind of thing. So one of the things we had to implement after the initial um, sort of inception of the, the webhooks model was putting some kind of signature on those to make sure that you can verify, yes, this is coming from Shopify. Um, it's not being spoofed, and also ensuring that. Uh, oh, this is two things. The first thing, making sure that it's not being spoofed. So you're actually getting real data from Shopify. So we uh, added a nice signature header to all our webhooks to make sure that uh, it's based on your API key, so you can tell it's coming from Shopify. And then secondly, we realized that we should probably make sure that all these API endpoints, or all these webhook endpoints, rather, are requiring sort of HTTP uh, secure HTTP, so HTTPS endpoints, yep. so that you can't put it on an unsecured uh, link there. You have to put it through HTTPS, otherwise it Shopify just say, no, can't do that, sorry. Yep, that uh, makes so a lot was, of sense. Yeah, that was quite a big challenge. And, and also, uh, people's, people's apps go down, and you're like, OK, how do I get all that information back? Um, so there's a couple of interesting ways of doing it. The way we ended up doing the Shopify is uh, we will do an exponential back off retry mm. sort of thing. So over the next 48 hours, if your app is down, we'll keep trying to send out the hook. 
and we'll keep trying to send it to you. Uh, but ultimately, if you're not back in 48 hours, then sorry, guy. Uh, yeah. You have to go back and you have to fetch it yourself because a lot of that data, it's, it's, it'd be nice to be able to get it back, but it's, it's not necessarily relevant anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. It's the, the, opportunity, the opportunity has passed. The data is now stale. You should probably actually make a request to the API to get the up-to-date information rather than relying on this, this data that's over two days old. Makes a lot um, of sense. Yeah. Cool. This is great, David. Uh, I mean, you've dig in, you've got the overview and some definitely some super helpful implementation details. So we really appreciate you taking the time to share how uh, Shopify deals with uh, APIs, webhooks, rest hooks, uh, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Boyd. It's been a pleasure talking All to right. you.